Today I want to talk about um, us developing our math skills. We have to have some maths at the, the geography A level. Um, um, I'm calling it surviving maths. Some of you won't really enjoy maths that much. And therefore, it's about having some basic um, ways of working through the problem so you can show all your working and still get the full marks, but without having to be a brilliant mathematician. I know that some of you won't like maths and might have a reaction a bit like this. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So I hope by the end of this video, you won't be feeling like Michael Scott there and you'll, you'll feel more confident about maths. Um, I am going to go through all of the... Um, the different types uh, um, that, that you need for your A-level course. Some of them will be quite obvious, but it's just to make sure you've got everything. So the mode, um, that is where uh, it is the value that appears most in a data set. And I've got this picture here because this is common, the wrapper. And so another way of saying a value that appears the most, it's the most common. So in this data set here, um, I've got a list of numbers and I've put them from the smallest to the largest. I circled these because these are the only numbers that appear twice and everything else appears once. And therefore, one equals the mode in this example. The only thing to look out for with modes is that if I had a data set like this, then I have uh, one appearing twice, but also two appearing twice. That means I have two modes. Um, and therefore, one and two are both um, the mode. And this is something we call bimodal. You can even get more than, um, if say, for example, there was another three in this set, you would then have three modes and that would be uh, multimodal. The next two to look at are the range, which is the difference between the highest and lowest number, and the mean, which is what we call the average. So on my data set here, if I'm trying to work out the range, I need to find the highest number, so I'd circle that one, and then there's the lowest number, and simply take the highest number from the lowest, so my range would be three. To get the mean, you are simply adding up all the numbers in your data set, and then dividing it by how many numbers you have. So if I add all up all of these numbers, then I get 10, 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 10, and then divide it by how many there is, and there is 4 actual numbers, so divided by 4 equals 2.5 for our mean. Next up is median. Median is the one that's often forgotten, um, and it is the middle. It is a bit like the middle child in the family, often goes a little bit unnoticed. We're going to look, find the median out of this data set, and then we're going to use that to help us find the interquartile range uh, and the standard uh, deviation. So what we need to do with this data set, first of all, is we need to rank the data from high to low. So I need to find out what is the high, you know, the largest amount, and then all the way down to the lowest amount. And it should look, uh, once you've done that, something like this. So here we have that data set, and I am going to rank it from highest to lowest. So I need to find the highest, which on this table is 665. So I would write 665 next to my highest. That's my first number I write down. And now I'm looking for the second highest, which in this um, table is 365. And then I continue to do that with the rest of them, working through it, making sure I'm putting them in the right order because that will obviously affect the results until I've got all the way from the highest to the lowest. And then this is how I find the median. This is the, the quickest way. In your exam, you have to show your working. By doing this, you would be showing your working. So um, to get to the middle one, I need to find the one that's isolated on its own. So simply, I go through and cross one off at each end and keep working inwards like that until I come to one that is on its own and that is going to be my middle number, that is going to be my median. So if I had um, an even set of numbers and I was trying to find the median, uh, this is what would happen. I would come up and realize there's not an isolated number and so I'd have two uh, numbers in the middle. What I then try and do is add those two numbers together and then divide by two and that would give me the median. So in this example um, I get a total of 500 divided by two 
and that gives me the median of 250. The next important bit of maths that we need to do um, is something called the interquartile range. And the reason why we did the median first is we need the median to be able to do this. The formula for the interquartile range is you take away the upper quartile from the lower quartile. So to find the interquartile range, we need to find where is the upper quartile and where is the lower quartile. And that starts with the median. As you can see, I've ranked the numbers from highest to lowest. This is my highest up here, and this is my lowest here. And as we did before, to make sure I'm finding the median, I'm going through and making sure I can find a number that is isolated. So I'm just ticking these off and say, okay, that number's on its own in the middle. That is my um, median. Then what I need to do is I need to find the middle um, between the, the middle number and the top number and the middle and the lowest number. So I'll show you an example of how I'm going to do that. So finding the upper quartile is pretty much identical to how we found the median, but just on a smaller scale. So I leave the median, it's a special number, so I, I don't um, cross it out, but I would go and take the top number out and realize that I don't need that one and I don't need this one here. I keep going again until I get a number that's isolated on its own, and that would be my upper quartile. If I want to find the lower quartile, I would do exactly the same. Um, again, I leave the median, I don't touch that one, I cross out this number, I cross out this number, until I go down and I get an isolated number. Therefore, if I follow my formula um, to, to get the interquartile range, my upper quartile is 300, and my lower um, quartile is 120, which means that my um, interquartile range is 180. Here's another example of a, se a separate a set of numbers just to work through that and show it working again. Um, we need to find the median. So I'm checking to see which is the isolated number and I realize that that is 50. So that's my median. Then to get my upper quartile, I, I am finding the middle number again in that top section. And that's going to be 90 in this case. And I'm finding the middle number in that lower section. So in this case, it's 30. So to complete the formula, the interquartile range is upper quartile take away lower quartile, which is 90 take away 30, which means my interquartile range is 60. Again, when you're trying to find the upper quartile, lower quartile, you might come across uh, this issue where you would have two numbers, you don't have an isolated number. Uh, so again, all you would do is find the middle and you do that by adding them up and divided by two. So the middle of 90 and 80 would be 85. So that would be your upper quartile and you'd have to do the same for the lower quartile as well. So that is some of the fundamentals for the geography course in terms of maths. I will be making another video that looks at slightly more complex stuff like standard deviation.